Let's talk about two-dimensional arrays. Just as an array is a collection of data, all of one data type, so is a two-dimensional array. It is actually an array of arrays. It too is stored in contiguous or side-by-side -side memory in the computer and is fixed or static, not able to grow or shrink once it's been declared. It is also very easy to manage using a double indexing process with a row and a column index, often called row major, which means the row is indicated first, then the column. Here is an example of declaring a new two-dimensional array initially filled with zeros. See how the values 3 and 4 indicate the number of rows and columns. Also notice that the first row is indexed with a zero, as is the first column, which makes the last row and column one less than the number of rows or columns. It is absolutely crucial that you keep track of this idea when processing two-dimensional arrays like this. Just as an array can contain other types of data, so can a two-dimensional array. Here are some examples containing floats with 0.0, .0 as the default value, or characters with an empty space as the default. Here's one with strings, which in some languages initially contains the default value null, which just simply means nothing. And then here is a Boolean array, which by default contains the value false. Here is a two-dimensional array instantiated with values. Pause the video for a moment to study how the different values in the statement align with the diagram of the grid. Most languages will have a length command or process to detect the dimensions of the grid. This first statement shows how many rows are in the grid. These next two show how many elements are in a particular row, as you can see. To access an element of the two-dimensional array for output or for some other process, you state the name of the array, grid in this case, and then using the double indexing process, stating the row and the column that you need. Here are three output examples that do just that. To change an element, you use the same double indexing process. To output the entire grid, use a nested loop process, as you see here, with the outside loop controlling the row and the inside loop, the columns. Look carefully at this example as it outputs each element in the grid. In summary, you need to know how to process a two-dimensional array, specifically how to create one with the data type that you need, use the length method or process to check the number of rows or the number of columns in each row, to access the individual elements of the grid, either to use them in a process or to change the element value using the double index process, and then use a nested loop to process the entire grid, either outputting them or including them in some sort of a calculation process.